Four round mock drafts were to the Atlanta Falcons. Subscribe to the channel so you can see us live this week in Indianapolis, Indiana for the 2024 Scouting Combine. But what we're doing here, you'll see next to my face, is the PFF Mock Draft Simulator. We're to the Atlanta Falcons. Here, I'm not just doing a mock draft. I'm going to show you two potential ways that Atlanta could go. In this mock, the quarterback has fallen in their lap. So, Jaden Daniels is here, obviously needing a quarterback. I will take him at number eight. I love Jaden Daniels. I don't really understand why he seems to be slipping at this point. Heisman Trophy winner, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions last year. Prototypical quarterback, size 6'4", 210, really athletic, really fast. I think that would be the ideal scenario. Now I don't have to worry about quarterback. I don't have to worry about any of the other things. I just got the guy that I need, and I sat right where I am. So I'll take Jaden Daniels. I still have 43, 74, 79, and 110. All right, we get to 43, and there's another guy that's just sitting on the board waiting for me to make use of the selection. So I need an edge rusher. Uh, I like some of what Atlanta has, but I think they could use more, as many other teams could. So I'll take Chop Robinson, the edge out of Penn State. Two really high-end years. Just didn't necessarily evolve as much this year as you would think uh, with him being an older player. Didn't play as much, had some injury things this year. But I still think 92.3 pass rush grade, 20.9% uh, pass rush pass rush win rate. I think he comes in as a situational pass rusher to start. Reminds me kind of a Miles Murphy uh, from last year out of Clemson. He's just a little smaller. I do think he could stand up if he was asked to. I, I also think he could just come in in four-man fronts and be an absolute dog against the pass. Uh, and if you watch how Raheem Morris coordinated the defense with the uh, Los Angeles Rams. I think he kind of fits into one of those situational roles uh, to begin with, with the goal of evolving him. So I take Chop Robinson right here at number 43. Click the button, let everything keep rolling. Uh, if I'm Atlanta, I'm still thinking, you know, I need a cornerback. I obviously want another receiver. The reason I didn't take one before is because I don't think it's that big of a, a, a it's not that pressing because I already have Kyle Pitts I already have Drake London I've got Jaden Daniels I've obviously got B. John Robinson but this worked out nicely because I sat in place and Jamari Thrash wide receiver out of Louisville fell right in my lap 6'1", 185 uh, a lot to like about the kid 77.6 PFF grade uh, this past year the drop rate don't take a ton into that because the quarterback play at Louisville was just not great I, I didn't love Jack Plummer uh, I evaluated Louisville going into the ACC championship game with Florida State and there just wasn't a ton to be impressed by uh, one of the things I do want to highlight is that missed tackles forced uh, 17 last year uh, playing at Louisville I really like this kid I think he would be a, a tremendous fit for Atlanta, and if you look over on the right side of the screen, some of his best games were against some of the best defenses. Kentucky, Duke, uh, not a terrible game against Florida State. I think the kid comes in immediately, can play some out of the slot. I think he can play some on the outside as well. Uh, didn't play as much in the slot as you would think at Louisville when you look at him because he looks kind of like a slot receiver, but he's really not. Uh, so right there at 74, Jamari Thrash, wide receiver out of Louisville. My second third-round pick, um, and here I would like to get a corner if at all possible. There's another player there that I just I can't resist because the fit just makes so much sense. Jeremiah Trotter Jr., linebacker out of Clemson. I don't really know what it is that people dislike about him so much. He's very fluid. He's very good. He's good against the pass. He's good against the run. That 16.3% missed tackle rate, that is, that's the scary part because he did have some missed tackles. But you're getting him here in the third round. It's not like he has to be flawless off the jump. It's just an asset. I think you can develop him over time. I think he projects as a really high-end inside linebacker uh, in this in this league. I, I don't know why people don't like him as much. I don't love this linebacker class, but it feels now like he's been passed by Peyton Wilson and Adrian Cooper and I'm not so sure that that's right. This is a guy we talked about going in the first round, and then we let a really bad year at, at Clemson, not for him, but for Clemson on the whole, move him all the way to here. I think it's a great value pick. Jeremiah Trotter with that second pick in the third round. 
Now we go into the fourth. Pick 110. Oh. Man, am I going to take two Louisville guys in the same draft? Hmm. These are always fun when I get to this point because it's like, well, I've already talked about Yeah, I'm going to. It's, but just because it, it does make sense. Jarvis Brownlee Jr., cornerback out of Louisville. Uh, that gives me another piece in the back half. And, and I'm not going to lie to you. This is, to me, the ideal scenario for Atlanta. Uh, so I'll run through this. It'll give you the grade. And then I'm going to give you another poss- possible alternative uh, for what Atlanta could do. We'll see how PFF grades this draft here momentarily. It's got to spin. There we go. And that, they give you a B plus there. Uh, B minus on Jaden Daniels because they think you took him too high. A's on Chop Robinson, Jamari Thrash, and Jarvis Brownlee. And then a C plus on Jeremiah Trotter, which is, that's that's bizarre to me. I think that's a great fit for Atlanta. Anyway, B plus overall grade from PFF. So let's give it. Let's give the old mock draft simulator another turn, and I'm going to try to do something slightly different this time. Four rounds. All the sliders are the same. Start the draft. I'm not going to do the trade up. I could do that, but I think that's something that we... You know what? I'll do that at the end. I changed my mind on the fly. All right, so Atlanta here at eight. Let's say they take the edge rusher uh, in their defense... Which one do I prefer? I really like Jared Verse. I really like Dallas Turner, but I like them in different scenarios. Looking at what Atlanta does, I think I'm going to take Dallas Turner. Um, Edge rusher out of Alabama. Oh, hit the wrong button. My bad. Uh, I'm going to take the edge rusher, Dallas Turner, out of Alabama. I'll take him here at eight. Really high pass rush win rate. I think he's... He struggled against the run, and he struggled against the run at Alabama, which is weird for me. Only a 4.2% run stop rate, but I've got Calais Campbell in front of him. So it's not necessarily that I'm overly worried about that. I think he comes in as a premier edge rusher off the jump and can get after quarterbacks. So this is where we're going to get the the slight discrepancy. I got the edge rusher early. Now I'm going to go to trade right here. I'm going to give up number 43 right here. I'm going to call the Chicago Bears if I can get this to do what I want it to. You always got to love when technology works. Let's see. L-M-N-O Bears. Do, 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 do. There we go. Select player. Justin Fields. Off of the trade. Yeah, we're going to force that one. I don't know what it would be on top of that, but I know it would it would cost number 43. So here I get Justin Fields. So now through two rounds, I've got Dallas Turner. I've got Justin Fields. We'll resume the draft. I still have those two picks in the third round and the one in the fourth. Okay. I still want to res- – oh, that would be ideal. Having two gigantic receivers like Kyle Pitts and Drake London, I would love to add this kid right here who I am so high on. Uh, he's he is a stereotypical slot 511 210 played roughly I'll say 90 percent of his snaps out of the slot at Western Kentucky I think he's gonna run really well very good against man only had a seven percent drop rate which is not terrible 2.78 uh in yards per route run F- he did have the second most screen catches in the country and had the most screen yards in the country. He's very dynamic with the ball in his hand. I can't tell you he's a he's a very polished route runner right now, but I think that will come in time. Biggest thing is that the jumping competition is going to be significant. So right here, I'll take Malachi Corley as a weapon for my new quarterback, Justin Fields. I've added the edge. I've added the quarterback. I've added the wide receiver. Jeremiah Trotter's here again. Do I want to do that again? Do I want to do that again, or do I want to add another piece? You know what? I, I'm 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 liking the way that this would break down. So let's go, Cameron Kitchens. I don't necessarily think he will be there, but if he were, this is who I would take. And I learned in the earlier mock drafts if the name's on the screen, you're going to judge me for not taking him. So I'll do that. Add the safety. Uh, to me, that's a a replacement to DeMarco Helms. And you have him and Jesse Bates. 
I've really cranked up this defense, added an edge rusher. Um, Kenshin's didn't have the greatest year at, at Miami, but I think he's clearly the second or third best safety in this class. And you, now you have a too high safety look. You're very multiple on defense, and you can get after the quarterback. So I'll take Cameron Kenshin's right there out of Miami. Takes me down to number 110. The one thing I still haven't added, and you know what? We'll just add the same one I added before. Uh, we'll take the corner Jarvis Brownlee out of Louisville. So let's see how PFF grades this by comparison. Here I get Justin Fields instead of Jaden Daniels falling in my lap. It'll give me my grade here momentarily. There we go. Okay, so I got Justin Fields uh, for a second-round pick. There probably would be another conditional pick there, but I'm going with Field Yates deal, which is basically that's what it would cost. B minus on Dallas Turner, which is a much lower grade than I thought it would be. A's on Malachi Corley and Jarvis Brownlee, both A minuses, and then a C plus on Cam Kitchens. PFF's just not as high on him as a lot of the rest of us are, and, and I get that, but that's still overall a B. My question, which one of these builds do you like better for the Atlanta Falcons? Is it better to have Jaden Daniels fall in your lap, or is it better to go get Justin Fields? And just for posterity's sake, we'll run it one more time with seeing what the trade looks like. We'll run four rounds there. And you know what? I, I, I'm going for broke. I'm not even going to mess with... Let's go here to... Let's go here to Washington. I'll go two. I got to give up eight, 43. Round one, round two offer that oh stop it all right so here i have given up a lot of my picks but i'll go get drake may and this is on the assumption that as the the process goes i will figure out that i'm not going to sit at eight and get Jaden daniels okay so i'll still add malachi corley to help him it seemed to like jeremiah trotter better so i'll add him so I got the receiver. Let's see, I got the receiver. I have not added an edge. Mohamed Kamara. That's a perfect situational pass rusher. Uh, I absolutely love him. I've talked about him in a few other videos. A lot of people think he has to stand up, which I do not agree with, but I think he can stand up and be a really good situational pass rusher. Okay, so PFF has decided that they have a definitive winner because it's an A on the trade-up to go get Drake May, A on Malachi Corley, a B- minus on Muhammad Kamara, and a C-plus on Jeremiah Trotter. Which one of these builds do you like? If you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, comment that in the comments. If you have a build that you like better, comment that as well. We'll be hitting those in Mullet's mailbag live from the Combine next week. And subscribe to the channel so you can see all of our content live from Radio Row at the 2024 Indianapolis Scouting Combine. You never know who's going to sit down in our chair. We're sitting right beside the Draft Network, guys. We've got PFF. We've got NFL Network. we got all the guys there with us for the Combine. And it's all yours right here in the sportsocracy.